guys. Okay, so we're going to try to do a painting just using our palette knife today. You'll need your mixed media paper, white, blue, and black paints, your palette knife, something to protect the table, and something for some paint. You'll also need a couple of paper towels. The first thing that we're going to do is to take out a piece of paper from our mixed media sketchbook. I'm going to put the sketchbook away so that it's nice and safe. We're going to turn the paper so that it is landscape because today we are making a landscape painting. We will want to go ahead and put our name on the back. Flip it over, it doesn't matter which side you use. Next, we are going to uh, do the background. The first layer is always a base layer of paint and I'm going to make really small dabs of paint directly onto my paper. Now remember, you can always add more. So you're very good now at making little tiny dabs of paint. I want to see lots of little tiny dabs of paint. So we're going to start at the bottom and we're going to put little Ooh, that was since that was so big I hardly need any more that was much more than I meant to squeeze out and remember you can always add more and then up here at the top I'm going to add blue It's much, much better to have less than you need because we're going to be painting on top of it. And if it's too thick with paint, it's just gonna smoosh around. We're gonna take our palette knife and we're going to start at the bottom. And just like you were icing a cake, we're just going to move the paint around on the paper so that it is all the way across the paper. And it looks like I do need more white. Since I got a pretty big blob, I don't have to do any more. I'm just going to move that around on the paper. I'm just doing my base layer. Now as I start moving up into my blue, I'm going to start picking up some of that blue on my palette knife. And I'm going to be moving that around too. And I'm going to go ahead and add just a little bit. Don't go crazy with the black because it's such a strong color. So two tiny little um, dots of black will do just fine. So that I have some black up here at the top. going to take this. Looks like since I'm scraping the paper a little bit, I'm going to add in just a little bit more blue, but you shouldn't have big mountains of blue or any color for that matter. And what I'm trying to do is to blend them so that the three colors smoothly work into each other. It's 
something kind of like that. Now I have blue on my palette knife. Um, so if I were to come back down here with that blue, then it would smear into my uh, white down here. So now I'm going to let that sit and start to dry just a little bit. And I'm going to add a little bit of blue and a little bit of black because we're going to make some trees silhouetted in front. of our background. And I'm just gonna mix that together. It's mostly black, but I'm hoping that that blue will give it a little bit of a tint. Okay, so now I'm going to make my trees, and this is the fun part. You take your palette knife and you get paint along one side of, of your palette knife and then you lay that side down so it's not flat, it's on that edge and you're going to basically lay it down so that it draws a line from about maybe two thirds up down your page. And you might need to kind of twist it just a little bit. You're trying to get the trunk of a, uh, of a tree. And then you're just going to pick up on the back side. See, I'm taking my palette knife. I'll clean it off so that you can see it more easily. I'm taking my palette knife and I'm kind of scooping on the back side of the palette knife um, my really dark black or blue. And then I'm going to go ahead and make some dots coming down this tree trunk. I'm gonna scoop some more up and then I'm going to start dragging those dots out. Now, because I'm doing a tree, this is kind of like a pine tree. And so it's going to be skinnier at the top and wider at the bottom. Now, I'm not really worrying too much about um, any details. I'm not worried about individual trunks. I'm just giving the impression. When you start to find that you don't have paint and you're just like dragging these white lines, then you want to pick up some more paint. And you're just dragging out away from your tree trunk with horizontal strokes. And again, you want to remember that the bottom of the tree is much wider than the top of the tree. You also want to leave a little bit of space between your um, trunks, because if you're between your branches, if you make it a big triangle, then it starts to look less like a tree. So these are little branches that are coming out, which look really cool. And then it goes up to a point. You can see I'm holding my uh, palette knife like a pencil kind of, instead of holding it like a shovel, holding it like a pencil, and that's letting me get the tip down onto the paper really easily. So now I'm going to make another tree beside my first one. And trees naturally vary in height, so I'm going to go ahead and make this one taller. So I'm giving myself that line. And I come back and I'm giving myself some dots down that line. It's okay if it's uh, if they're not perfect. You're just going to be dabbing paint on it, then you can pull out. And 
because sometimes these trees, they overlap or they move into each other. So I'm just picking up some paint. And just being thoughtful so that At the base, my branches are wider. And as I move up, then they get less wide. more dots so that I can just drag that paint out. And this one is pretty close to our the first one. So those branches, some of those branches are going to reach out. And overlap our first tree. The great thing about painting trees is that um, nature is irregular. So if your tree looks different from mine, that's okay. I'm going to give myself a little bit more black because I'm gonna do a couple more trees. And again, tinting it with a little bit of blue. Not sure that you see very much of that blue in there, but you'll see a little bit more now. Okay, so I'm going to do my next tree. You wanna vary your tree heights. So rather than make another one that's right the same size, I'm going to come down and say that this one is a little further away and that it's a little bit shorter. Got a little crazy with that line, Miss Thomas, but that's okay. I'm going to come back and add my dots, my dots of paint. And then I'm going to start from the bottom. and drag those dots out. If you need to pick up more paint, make more dots. Just remember that as you're going toward the top, your um, tree branches are going to become more narrow. So you won't drag out as far as you get to the top. down here we'll drag out a little bit further okay I'm gonna make another one and this one 
Maybe this one's really big. Okay. And get our dots. And dry it out. Here we go. And you kind of want to keep in mind that even though they're not symmetrical, um, they are balanced. So if you pull out, you know, a finger width on the left, you're going to want to pull out about a finger width on the right. Okay, so that looks really pretty good. We are going to go ahead and give it a nice connective base at the bottom. So I'm going to pick up more of my blue black and I'm going to connect them at the bottom. So that they are sitting on some kind of ground of some sort. And you'll notice that I'm using the flat end. If you find yourself like scraping down to the paper, then you, it means that you're using the edge of your palette knife. In this case, you want to flatten it out and use the flat end of your palette knife. And if you want to, you can give it a little bit of texture down here, or you can leave it smooth. Mine's kind of going at a little bit of an angle, and I kind of like that. Now you can leave it just like that. If you would like to, you could add one more tree. Um, it's yours to do with as you'd like, so however you would like to do that. So it occurred to me that this is a lovely evening sky, a beautiful wooded forest, and maybe it would be fun to have some um, stars. So if you would like to, don't have to, if you don't want to, you can get a Q-tip and the tip of it and just dab in a few dots for stars. This actually looks like a really cute Christmas card now. <laughs> Maybe I have the holidays on my mind. And you can go straight over those trees if you'd like. Maybe it's not, uh, maybe it's snow. Maybe there's a little bit of snow. Also, if you would like, you can take your fan brush. That's the one that fans out. Add a little bit of white to the tip of the fan brush and by holding the fan brush about a finger length away from your painting um, and holding it firmly in one hand you can tap on the ends And it will make lots of little dots. You can see also starting to make these lines, which is kind of neat. I kind of like that.
Now, this technique is definitely a bit messy. You will want to have your um, apron on and know that anything that's in the area, including your computer, is likely to get little um, bits of white paint on it. Maybe I'll pick up some more white paint. I'm gonna hold it pretty close to the tip. And then dab. Tap, tap, tap. You can see some of these bigger blobs came off too. There you go. Look at that. Ooh, I kind of want to do the same thing with black. Let's just see what happens. I'm going to wipe off my white on my paper towel. I'm going to pick up black. And dab, dab, dab. It's really tap, tap, tap. Kind of interesting. Maybe I went a little bit overboard down here. I don't know. Do you like it better with or without? I don't know. Kind of like it with. Thanks, guys. See ya.